need for God and for each other. When we take time each week to worship, we join ourselves to believers throughout the world and throughout the ages, to all who are members of Christ's body, the church. Changes. Uh, so uh, this, this sermon series is about changes. So I'm Brian Callahan. So uh, I'm normally over there. So this is a change for us as well, right? And I'm smiling and laughing as, uh, as they're uh, working through the audio and visual changes that I normally work through uh, following John. Hopefully I'm easier to follow than John. It took me, <laughs> took me about a year to get in John's head, and now I can't get him out of my head. But uh, so uh, John's not here. He's on a family reunion, and hopefully he's, had, he's having a great time and has already uh, swum across the lake. But uh, yes, this sermon series that we're starting is about changes. And it seems like every time we start a new sermon series, John is away, right? Uh, so we kick it off. But uh, changes, as I mentioned in the prayer, are constant. Changes in life, work, and even church. So... But, uh, but uh, Jesus talked about, uh, you know, uh, changes, right? Uh, and so we, we know about our God. So, Elizabeth, let's go to Hebrews 13.8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So while things change in our lives, in our world, in our church, our God is the same. Our God is the same. So Elizabeth, let's go to the next slide. So one of those changes that we have going on is a new building. So as we look around uh, the opulent uh, sanctuary that we have here, right? Uh, and those on Facebook can't see the, uh, uh, but uh, hopefully you've joined us here. We've, we've got a new building. Uh, there's been lots of work going on, so thanks to Mike and Adam and Pam and Greg and John and Jamie and all of the other volunteers that have helped. And if you haven't been over there, there's been a lot of work that's gone on this week. A lot of work that's gone on this week. So let me go to the slide of what it looks like now over there. Elizabeth, if you can go to the next slide here. Yep, yep. So, uh, so this is what it looks like over there right now. J just kidding. Just kidding, right? Uh, sometimes we think a, sh a church should be this, right? The stained glass windows, right? The, the high ceilings, all the ornate uh, decorations, right? But the building is the little C church. The building is the little C church. The body of Christ is the big C church. Big C church. And so Jesus talked about changes, right? Uh, and uh, he talked about wineskins in Mark, Mark 2.22. So Elizabeth, let's go to the next slide there. So let me read this. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour the new wine into new wineskins. So just a little bit of a, a funny story about that to go along with, uh, with what Jesus says in Mark 2.22. Uh, so uh, John recently had, uh, had some work. He had an electrician come over and, and do some, some work with us. And uh, I'll show you some pictures of the actual building here in just a second. But, uh, you know, it's in, it's in the old lumber yard over on... Uh, over a few miles from here, right? The old lumber yard, and he said, hey, you know, this electrician came in and says, wow, this, this old lumber yard's really looking good in here. And John says, yeah, 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 you should, you should come on Sunday and join us. And he says, yeah, I would, but, uh, you know, are you gonna have a bar in the back, right? Uh, but Jesus did talk about wine, so maybe we have a wine bar at the, the new church, but just, just kidding, just kidding. But uh, let's, let's go to the next slide about what it really looks like, right? So this is our actual main space, right? And I laugh because uh, the picture I took yesterday, you can see the uh, trash bag in the, in the bottom left there in the picture. And there's a lot of work, but it doesn't look like a lumberyard, right? Uh, it looks like a place of worship. 
And it looks like a place that we can worship God together in a space that's a little bit bigger uh, than where we're at. Uh, and Elizabeth, go to the next slide. And it's got space to, to expand, too. And so there are two bays over there. And so ultimately, this will be the bay that the children, the youth, and the kids area can go. We're, we're going to teach construction skills over here, right? Remember, kids, Jesus was a carpenter. And we're going we're gonna to teach carpentry skills over there, skilled trades. I'm all about skilled trades, right? Uh, so, so we're going to teach life skills over there. So next slide, Elizabeth. And my, my personal favorite here, uh, we're only showing one toilet, but there will be multiple toilets. So that is, how many toilets, Melissa? I think three. Yeah, two, three. Yeah, but there's only one toilet there. But my, my favorite part about this picture is the three spotlights right above the toilet, right? So there's no accidents or misses or whatever. But so we're moving up in the world, church, right? Uh, so, but it's change, this is going to be a change for us, right? Elizabeth, move on to the next one. And change is hard. Regardless of whether the change is a wanted change or a needed change, right? Change is hard. Change requires decision. So we had to make the tough decision that, you know, while we've been here, you know, almost two years, right? Uh, and uh, we, we've had lots of memories here, and it's been a great location to start with. We're growing. We're, we're teaching new people about the love of Jesus Christ, right? We're, we're bringing more people into resuming or starting their faith walk to, 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 for, for, for folks that, that you know, maybe had, uh, had never seen that before or had it been a while, right? This is exciting. But it's hard, and it requires decision, and it also requires work, right? There's a lot of work associated with that. It takes work from a construction standpoint, but it also takes a lot of other work, right? A church, a church doesn't run just automatically on its own. I don't just click a button and, and all the automation of Microsoft Windows and everything goes and, and starts up the service, as, as Elizabeth and Kane will say from the audio visual, right? It takes work. <clears throat> but successful change requires certain things, right? And so uh, it, it's funny here, um, you know, what I'm going to go through here is, is actually something that I do in work quite a bit of time. So I, I kind of feel like George Costanza, right, that my worlds are colliding, right? Uh, that's a joke that only us old people get from, from Seinfeld, Seinfeld, right? But, but this is about change management. And even in churches, we need to follow good change management to make things work, right? And so there's a change management model that we use in the corporate world that's used a lot of other places called ADCAR, right? We're going to walk through this, uh, and, then, uh, and then I'm going to have a, a little conversation with Adam here in a minute. But, but change requires awareness, right? It requires, next up, Elizabeth, it requires a desire, it requires knowledge. It requires the ability to do it. And it requires reinforcement of the change, right? So all of those things are required for us to make this change to our new location, for this make this change of growth in one church, in, in really responding to all of those things that God is asking us as a church to do. And I'm talking about the big C church, right? The body of Christ, us as the body of Christ to do. We need to follow our process of change in order to make this successful. So Elizabeth, next slide. So changes, right? So again, this entire series is about change. Change in our life, change in our church, but change is a process, and so, luckily, we don't do changes alone. So next slide, Elizabeth. So I'm going to invite up here my, my friend and colleague, Adam Cyan. So he is the One Church Facilities Pastor. And so, Adam, uh, welcome to the stage here, and uh, welcome to this fun. But uh, what exactly is a facilities pastor, Adam? It's working. You're on. Okay, well, we'll get to what a facilities pastor is in just a minute. All right, all first, right. First of all, I wanted to start with an introduction for anybody that doesn't know me. My name is Adam Cyan. Most people know me from the hardware. Mike, Mike closer, Adam. There you go. Most people know me from the hardware. 
um, but I have accepted a role as facilities pastor here. Um, I'm married to a wife, Shana, or my wife, Shana. We have four kids. Uh, a bunch of them are up here singing this morning. The rest of them are out in the back making all that noise that distracts you guys every morning. <laughs> um, so John had asked me to talk about our culture now and what it's going to be going forward or what it means as we make this move. Um, so I guess I want to start with anybody having mixed feelings about moving. Anybody a little nervous? No? Everybody's excited? <laughs> okay. So... Can we go to the next slide, Elizabeth? So for those that don't know, I have a little bit of history in this building. Um, my family owns the hardware in town, and when we had that little water incident a few years back, it ruined the hardware. Uh, the man that owns this building cleared it out for us, offered us the space just for free. So we set up a temporary hardware in the store. Um, in my opinion, probably saved our business. I mean, it, it let us get open back on our feet pretty quick. After that, it became a repair shop um, where I got to hang out with John's son quite a bit, with Jackson. Um, got talking to John about it, talked about his idea of planting a church in here. Um, from the repair shop, it now became a church home to me. And through all of this, I want to be clear that it was never the building that was the special part. Through all that, I believe 100% that it was it was God walking us through that. It was all his doing, you know, taking care of my family in so many ways and now helping us take care of each other in, in this way. Um, we pop to the next one. So in the back of, the, of my Bible, uh, it defines church as an assembly or called ones, a body of believers gathered to worship Jesus not the building in which they meet. And that's the big point I want to make, that um, even though one church is our home, it's, it's just a building. Uh, the church is who we are, it's not where we are. So my job as a facilities pastor is basically to, to oversee the maintenance um, and the volunteers. Going back to, I think, John's one sermon, I hope I don't butcher this, there was the, the three Bs that they were using that they modeled from Thrive. Um, I believe it was belong, believe, and behave. I'm part of that belong part of our culture going forward. So when you guys see me coming or get a phone call from me, I'm going to be the one you're going to want to walk away from or not answer because I'm probably going to be hitting you up for some volunteer. Yeah. All right, thanks, Elizabeth. Let's go to the next slide. So as we talk about change, and Adam, if you can stand over here so you can be fully on camera, right, uh, for, the, for the video audience here, is that, you know, we want to talk about all of this change model and what this, this, this means, right? So from an awareness of moving to the new location, moving to the new building, give us the details about, uh, about this new spot. Well, I'll give you the details that I know. Um, we're shooting for sometime this fall. Um, for those of you who have been in Midland a while, it is the old 84 lumber building. It's on the corner of Wackerly and Stark Road, right at the, the exit there. Uh, I don't know the address. Um, the space is at least double this. I think it's about 10,000 square feet, and this is about three. So we're going to have a lot more room to, to kind of spread out and, and do some of God's work. Um, the who and how, we're doing it as a mixture. I mean, donations, you know, financial donations, the puzzle pieces that we're selling, that's, that's helping to pay for the work that we can't do on our own. Um, I'm sure a lot of you were there for the, the volunteer work day we had last Saturday we did it. I mean, tremendous turnout. You guys got so much work done. I wish I could have been there to be part of that. Um, and then a why. I mean, why, it, it, it's growth. You know, we're growing as a church. Uh, we want to expand our ministry and be able to offer a lot more to a lot more people. And so this extra space is going to help us do just that. Great. Okay, so that was the awareness part, Adam. So let's move to the desire. What's, what's great about the new location? Why should everybody be really excited about the new location? Uh, first and foremost, it's going to give us a kid's area that's separated from the church a little bit. Uh, just more space. I mean, more seating. We can accommodate more people. It'll let us do, oh, say we wanted to do things like events, a host a speaker, do a dinner, uh, 
just more outreach opportunities in a larger space. All right, the next one is K for knowledge. So uh, again, it's a, it's a bigger space, right? Um, I think it has an office area, kids area, small groups area, right? Um, I mean, uh, so, so we're really growing our ability to do ministry over there, right? Yep, correct. Yep. All right, uh, and the next is really about ability and reinforcement. What do we need in order to make this change successful, Adam? Well, we've got, I think, a scripture verse coming up. Well, uh, it's good. well we're going to need volunteers. Um, obviously, that's why I'm up here. We're going to need, we're going to do at least one more, possibly multiple work days. Um, any way anybody can help, you know, finances, just skills you have. Um, yeah, and, and so we're going to need volunteers for teams, yep. right? And so we talk about Romans 12, 6 to 7. So we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophecy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So what we all need to take from this is that God has blessed each one of us in our, in our own ways. You know, we have musicians, we have builders, we have people with all kinds of talents, and each one can bring something special to, to this church, to the body of Christ, and where this church is going. Um, as we move forward, we're going to create more teams that, and I say teams, teams are really just groups of people that are going to have certain focuses on, on our, our ministry going forward. We're gonna have things like a parking team to just you know help help in the parking lot. We're gonna have a first impressions team where they're gonna be the ones that make that first contact with new people or just anybody showing up on a Sunday. Show them that they're welcome, that they're loved. We're gonna have a hospitality team. They're gonna be in charge of you know setting up the coffee, the kids area, making sure everything's ready to go for us. Uh, we want to expand into having an events team. We want to be able to do things like we do on Father's Day or a graduation or um, you know, our VBS that we do, our party in the park. Uh, the CARES team will be a big one. The CARES team is just reaching out past our immediate family church, just when we see a need in the community or a, a certain person that's hurting or any, anything that this church as a, as a family or that we can do to help. Um, anybody that, that, that doesn't feel called or, you know, they're too, I don't want to say nervous, too scared to get involved in that, Pray. I mean, pray for John and his family. Pray for the leadership that's making these decisions. Pray for our church family as we serve. Thanks, Adam. So, Elizabeth, next slide. So, again, change is hard, right? So, this is going to be a hard change, even though it's a welcome change. But remember, Jesus doesn't change. So he's, gonna, he's already there with us in the new location at the same time that he's here with us now, right? Jesus doesn't change, but change, irregardless, is hard. But change will change your life. It will change our life, and our mission and vision for One Church is to change the lives of people that come to One Church and the lives of our community by the knowledge of, of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So... I'm going to say here, too, that, uh, that God calls us to many different things. Some of those that we like, some of those that, that maybe we're like, God, are you really calling me to do that? Are you sure? Am I the person for that? And so part of that, and I'm going to give, uh, give, give Adam some credit here, right, uh, is that, uh, you know, God calls us to, 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 to these things that, that are maybe difficult, right? Uh, and so, you know, we're going to end here in prayer. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, Adam, you shared that uh, that's not your favorite thing to do, right, is to, uh, is to lead corporate prayer. So, but, yeah. uh, but, but God's calling you to that, right? Uh, and so we're going to finish up here in prayer. And uh, Adam's going to step out a little bit out of his comfort zone and, uh, and really demonstrate those steps that we need to take when we're answering God's call. Hey, you're not on mic there, uh, Doug. You want to come up? Well, no, I mean, I think everyone can hear me. I'll stand up. But 
not on Facebook, Doug. Oh, really? Uh. <laughs> Is there uh, what particular days can we show up to work? Um, is it like every other Saturday and what time over there and stuff? So, because I don't have Facebook, so I'd like to know when to show up or anything like that to go over there and work at the new church, if you have any idea. As far as I know, we don't have any other work days scheduled yet. I think we're giving everybody a break from the last one. Um, I'm sure we'll make an announcement in church when, in, when we are going to do it, and there will be, I'm sure, something on Facebook for, for those two. Okay? All right. So, well, hold on. So the, uh, Brian is absolutely right. There's three things that just terrify me. Um, roller coasters accidentally eating an olive and I don't I don't want to hear the black or green argument because they're both disgusting um, and, and then praying in front of people is just something that I just yeah but I you know I, I I really want people to get involved in the church I want you guys to step out of your comfort zone a little bit and get involved and I'm not gonna ask anybody to do anything I'm not willing to do so without further ado let's step out of our comfort zone Almighty God we we thank you for coming into our lives, guiding us, calling us to you. We pray that in this season of change, you will speak to each one of us, show us, show us how we can serve you, how we can serve each other, how we can do your work here on earth. We pray going forward that you will be with us, this church family, your big church family. Uh, be with John and his family, protect them, keep them safe. We pray that you will be with our church leadership. We pray that in everything we, we do, your hand will be upon us. In your almighty name we pray, amen.